upside down. That's right, because the first map, am I confusing y'all? <laughs> if I do, let me know. The first map, we're still dealing with where the Bible originated. We haven't even gotten out of that yet. Y'all with me while I'm going into all this? The first maps were, were developed and created by the first people to create and develop books and, and the uh, alphabet and writing, pictographic writing, and what they call the hieroglyphics, which means holy writing, is what it means. Hero means holy, Greek for holy. The holy writings and then other types of writings, the first people to do this, there were no Europeans on earth doing this at all. And when they went in the Nile Valley to develop agriculture there, that is it, there, coming from Kush now, obviously already having this knowledge, when they went there to develop it, they took with them the alphabet and writing because, as Drusilla Houston and others tell us, and in her, wonderful, her book, The uh, Wonderful Ethiopians of the Ancient Kushite Empire, that it was the Kushites who first knew how to write and passed that on to the Kemetists. They first knew that. So the knowledge existed prior to the time they went in the Nile Valley. Am I right in making that deduction? And they went into the Nile Valley about between 18,000 and 17,500. How long did the knowledge exist before that? Perhaps we'll get to answer that question as we go on. If I don't, bring it up in the question and answer session. Therefore, they took this knowledge with them already when they founded agriculture there in the Nile Valley. They didn't stop in the Nile Valley. They traveled on over. I better use this larger map. It was just a hop, skip, and a jump to Palestine, there to Arabia, on up into Persia, and all over into India. And that's why all of those civilizations in their mythology, and I cover it, I do cover it in African Genesis, in their mythologies of the creation of the world, speak about this black man and woman coming to the land and establishing civilization. Because these same people, whether it was a Satan or Saul or their descendants, because I doubt if they lived that long, <laughs> their descendants, but they were still carrying their name because they were carrying their what? Tradition. And what? And culture, tradition and culture. They were carrying the Asara set tradition and culture with them wherever they went. So that's in India. Anywhere you go in those lands. The Mayas over here also spoke of them. But as I say, I document it carefully. I can't read all those documents today because I'm trying to cover a lot of territory. So not only did the Bible originate in uh, Kemet, which is where? Yep. Okay, y'all be with me now. <laughs> okay. Uh, not only did it originate there, and not only, as Roger said, it was 3,000 years older than the Hebrews, who didn't come in the land until about what? You, you're writing it down, 1675 BCE. But it is much older than 3,000 years older because the foundation of civilization in the Nile Valley, and the word for Nile should be Hopi. That's what they called it, the Hopi River. <laughs> it was a happy river indeed because it was the bread that provided the bread basket of the world then. The Hopi River, it was named after one of their deities which represented a scientific principle, but that's another story. Now, when they came into the Nile Valley there 18,000 years ago, the knowledge upon which the Bible was based was already in existence. Already in existence. All right, let's deal with that document some more. You still there? Now, we find that we're still on document one now. So the Bible really originated in ancient Egypt, which should be Kemet, or Africa, let's put it that way, where the population, according to Herodotus and Aristotle. Now, for those who may not know, we need to find out who is this person, these persons he's quoting, Herodotus and Aristotle. Herodotus is reputed to have been the father of history, but he was recording history between 484 and 425 BCE. 484 and 425 BCE. 
And that's a circa date, circa meaning around about. Now, if he was recording, this is a Greek, if he is recording history there, what about this history that's been going on for at least uh, 18,000 years before he gets on the scene? Or at least 17,000 years before he arrives on the scene? Who was recording history prior to that? So he therefore could not be the what? Father of history. He's the father of what history? European. European history. For the European, because they trace all of their development back to the Greek. Greek. Everything in their society today is Greek. The fraternities and the sororities are because that's where they trace it, because the Greeks, according to Dr. John G. Jackson, were the first civilized white folks. Let's make it clear, <laughs> that's first civilization. But you got it, you got part of it right. The first civilized white folk. Right, he compiled what was already in existence. Right, thank you. Because he wasn't creating anything. He went, and he says that in his book, The Histories. He said, the, the Egyptians told me this, and the Ethiopians told me this, and in India they told me this, and the Chalkians told me this. He went, he said, that's how he wrote it. So he was taking down other people's stuff and compiling it. That's what he was doing and editing. So, huh? He got, the credit. he got the credit for it because who was giving the credit? If we were passing out the, uh, if we were passing out the uh, Academy Awards, who would be getting them? <laughs> you know, who would, what would be the best picture of the year? Daughters of the Dust. I mean, it's unquestionable. There's no question what the best picture of the year or any year for a long time has been. Daughters of the Dust, if we were passing out the what you call it, so he gets the credit, because who's giving the credit? Right now, in this room and in our culture, and as we uh, liberate our minds and selves, we give the credit where credit is due. So history was, of course, was not recorded by him. But I wanted to bring that out because he is used as an authority by not only Rogers, but Dr. Van, Dr. Van Sternemann, for all of us, all of the African-centered scholars, because he was a first-hand witness. He was there on the scene to see it for himself. And we'll be discussing him some more. Now, who is this Aristotle cat? And it's important that we deal with this Aristotle dude. Who is he? Uh, um, intellectual person. A Greek scholar, a Greek intellectual, that's right. And he was on the scene between 384 and 322. 384 and 322. I want you to be taking these notes down. And there's a place back here in the back. There was. I, I, I left the space. I hope they did in the repair. Yeah, there's a couple of sheets for the notes and glossary and all that for you to have that information back there. Now, he traveled with Alexander Mesnama the Great. Yeah, Alexandria is what it should have been called. But anyway, that's another story. <laughs> When, and he had, having been given the clue by Herodotus, who visited the land where all the knowledge was, Greek scholars now began to do what? Go to Africa to get their learning. Because that was the only place to get an education, a complete education. And the Greeks didn't have an institution that could give them an education in Greece. Dr. George G.M. James makes that very clear in The Stolen Legacy. They did not have it. It did not exist at that time. It was only after they came in contact with the African. They conquered the African, as Dr. Um, Asa Hilliard III tells us. They eventually conquered the African militarily, but the African in turn conquered them culturally, because they did not have the culture. So their culture came from Africa. So even though they might have conquered the body, they couldn't conquer the soul. We had the soul. They had to get the soul from us. And that's something you must always remember. So when they keep telling our children to be Greek this and the Greek that and the Greek, the Greeks didn't create any of this knowledge. It came from the Africans. Okay. Of course. As the king. And he was imitating us. And now you got black folks imitating him who was imitating them. <laughs> that's, the, that's, that's why it's so, so yeah. however, the, as Brother Malcolm taught us of all our studies, what? 
history is best qualified to reward all research. That's why it's important to understand your history. Now, this Aristotle, the reason why I wanted to focus on him a minute is because...